Schloss. Good morning, sir. How are you? I'm doing well, guys. Good morning. Good morning. Um, appreciate you guys reminding me of that song uh, this morning. <laughs> well, I've been here, hearing it in my sleep, which is actually, I, I guess that's a good thing. Well, let's go over this weekend. This morning we find out uh, the number one team in the country, Texas A&M, just the success of the weekend, the season so far, the stakes are getting harder, obviously. Just uh, your overall thoughts on things, uh, how things have played out. Uh, you know, I mean, obviously feel good about our record, feel good about where we are halfway through the SEC season. So you um, you try to uh, enjoy it for a second. Um, actually, you know, what I'm trying to enjoy is just the relationships with the players and the overall experience of our games. Um, but we also respect the game itself and the league every opponent, including Air Force, tomorrow. Um, and you know that at the end of the day, the, you know, the regular season, we'd love to win a championship, but that at the end of the day, you're trying to keep your team moving forward, keep improving, keep them healthy, um, and try to be, if we are fortunate to be in a postseason, to, to have your team be at its best, or at least healthy enough to be at its best uh, when it gets here. So. Um, yeah, you know, we can't get we can't get drunk with with uh, rankings and all that kind of stuff because it you know it literally has no value other than it that it brings deserved notoriety to the program. Coach, I think when you go back and look at the week and specifically the weekend, everybody's going to look at uh, they want to talk about those those blowout wins on Friday and Saturday. But I want to talk about yesterday and. Getting down four to nothing, your decision to go to the pen early, even though I thought you know Lampkin had a little bit of bad luck with that, uh, the double play would have gotten him out of that inning. But uh, just Cortez and, and your continued growing confidence in him, and I like what you said after the game. You, like you feel like he's in a good space mentally, and you're going to keep him in that bullpen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think Justin. Uh, let's talk about Justin first. I think he, yeah, he had some luck, but he also he didn't really have uh, change ups really. Most days, it's his best secondary pitch, and I don't know that he threw one in the strike zone. Um, and then he had a couple flare hits. Uh, we threw a ball away in the center field, um, gave up a home run to the one guy on the team. Well, not necessarily the one guy with the wind blowing out, but the one big physical player in Holcomb. Uh, and you know, sometimes, you know, you're a victim of being the guy, the third game guy when when the other teams in you know they're super desperate to win. So. Uh, but yeah, Cortez was awesome. Um, really good to see him do that two times in a row. Uh, he was pitching, I think he was on fumes there towards the end, even though he's touching the upper nineties, but, uh, he did a great job and he does, you know, I think, uh, Zane's question after the game was a valid one because that's your, every general baseball fans first thought would be, you know, should we look at his role being different? And I think what the fans don't get to be a part of is the mindset of the player and where their comfort level is. Right. So, um, I think right now he's in a good space and I don't think we would want to mess with that. Um, if it, if it were to ever be needed, at least he has the experience of starting a game. Um, but kind of like Ashley Beck right now, you would love for him to be available, if not two times in a weekend, at least two times in a week. Yeah, and then your decision, you, you've said it a bunch, you're, the biggest decision you make is when to bring Evan in. So just kind of take me through his usage throughout the weekend, and then was there any thought yesterday when you guys scored that 12th run to, to sit him down and have somebody else go for the night? Yes, there was. Um, our thought was that we were just going to have him get uh, that Vastine guy. So Vanderbilt, they you know they only have the one left-handed hitter, and he hits. He was hitting 087 going into the weekend against lefties, um, and he's actually he he has the most extra base hits on their team. Um, so he's actually got pretty good power, um, and I just didn't want to give them a chance to get something started. I've been especially where the wind's blowing, and you have a chance to. I mean that's a 
winning the series, that's why we do what we did sat, you know, Saturday is I'm just, I'm just not risking anything. And then, so I, the plan was to just have him pitch against Bastine. And then he got him out on one pitch. And I was like, okay, let's see how quickly he can do this. And then they swung at the next first pitch. And I'm like, well, golly. And he said he had come back in the dugout and said, I wanted to finish this. And so, uh, we had Rudis ready to go. Um, you know, we wanted to save every pitch. If I had to do it over again, once he gave up the homer, I would have taken him out. But, um, I don't know. I was, I was excited for Evan in the moment. Uh, but if I had it to do over again, I wouldn't have started anybody else in the inning. Um, but I would have maybe gotten him out after he got the first two outs so that, cause we do have a short, short uh, week uh, this week in terms of rest. Shalas, we asked you something similar last week uh, after the Sunday game against South Carolina. Just talk to me about players' mindset going into an opportunity to sweep that this team is, is never finished, right? Uh, they they see blood in the water, they go after it. They do. I, I, well, I, I mean, I wish you could be in the dugout with them. There isn't a um, – there aren't emotional highs or lows. So when we're winning, um, they don't – take it for granted. They just play when we're losing. They don't panic. They just play. And that's, you know, that's just the one thing I challenge them with all year, especially once we got off to a good start is, is how mature can you be? And in other words, um, you see teams play great on weekends and bad on Tuesdays. And, and, and that can just be baseball or a lack of depth of pitching you know, that can be baseball related stuff, which we've all been, uh, been a part of in years past, or, um, what I never wanted to be is a lack of what I call immaturity, where you don't prepare the right way. You, you let a, a, a success or failure on a Sunday affect the next game. And I know it sounds coachy, but it truly is an opening day mentality. I want them to take the confidence that comes from winning, right? Because game is such a game of, I mean, baseball is such a game of, of confidence, right? And um, I want them to take the confidence, but I don't want, to, want, want them to ever assume anything. And, and, you know, fortunately or unfortunately, I've been doing this for 35 plus years, and I know how fleeting all of this can be. You know, you can, I mean, I've been, I coached a team one year at TCU where we were hanging around 500 and our season was on the ropes. And we go to Texas and sweep Texas when they were number one or two in the country. And we went to the world series and we flipped our season around and we, and we've seen plenty of teams that have great regular seasons, but don't play well in the postseason. So the mindset of a coach, the mindset of a coach is it's probably not very healthy, but it is what it is you're always just moving on to the next game. Coach, talk a little bit of the baseball stuff. I, I've never seen Ali Camarillo hit a home run to center field, and then we asked him in the post game. That was the first time he hit a ball out to center field, but it, it kind of speaks to what you said. Like He's getting outputs on game days that are greater than what y'all saw in any fall practice or, or inner squad. Is that a thing that's a product of a guy just playing to the lights, or it's a product of, of some of the work maybe he's done with Josh Kiesel? Uh, I think it's everything. I think it's, uh, if you look at a side angle view of his swing, and I know you and I have talked about this, if you would look at a side angle view of him now versus when he showed up here or versus him last year at Northridge, it's not even the same hitter. Mike Early has done an unbelievable job and of, of transforming his approach and his physical setup. And, of course, Ali's to be credited for do, actually doing it and buying in. Um, Josh is to be credited for getting him stronger. Uh, he's actually hit balls that hard to that part of the field this year. Um, I'm not going to tell you the wind blew that ball out of the ballpark, but I think it may have been the difference between it hitting the fence and going out. Um, but Ollie, you know, if you watch him, he and I had a conversation, uh, after his last at bat before the Homer. And I said, man, your competitiveness is what makes you great but you can't let that over go over a threshold to where you swing in a bad pitch with two strikes. Right. 
you, you, you'll watch him swing and he fouls his, a ball straight back. And if you watch his body language, he's, he's, like, he's so upset that he missed that pitch. He's got to flush it and move on to the next pitch. And sometimes he gets so competitive that he's in, in fight mode instead of being in control of himself. And he, if you remember when he chased that pitch up for strike three, um, and those are the balls we need him to lay off of. But, but yeah, I mean, Ali's, Ali's so he, he's so fun to be around and obviously an elite defender and really good base runner too. Were, were you surprised, not surprised because we know the talent of this offense, but I mean, Vanderbilt rolled out some real arms this weekend and real arms out of the bullpen on Sunday, and I know there's some of them are young, but I'm sitting there watching these these kids run in and going, man, these look like front end SEC starters, whether it's this year or down the road. And I thought your guys really did a good job within the game adjusting to what the Vanderbilt arms were doing. Yeah, we did. Uh, Mike's really, really good at giving the guys a plan. Um, I mean, Carter, that was named yesterday, Gracie yes. Carter. Uh, I, mean, he, he, I mean, he was their Friday night starter last week, right? Or the week before, um, guys still in a hundred miles an hour and started sticking his breaking ball, which he doesn't normally do. Um, and then we get down for nothing and you're like, Oh baby, here we go. And then McElvain is just, he's going to pitch in the big leagues for a long time as a left-handed reliever. And then they just kept bringing the lefties, which is, I mean, all good left-handed pitching is normally tough on any team. And we did a nice job with them that, you know, they gave us the extra out on the ground ball. But uh, all of that was because of you know Cortez and and how we how we play defense and and also uh, how Jackson Appel caught. I mean, catching Cortez is not a lot of fun. Um, the ball's going all over the place, uh, and then he gets a lot of really tough foul balls because of his sinker. And Jackson took a tough one uh, yesterday. It, it didn't hit any part of his equipment. He got it right in the mid thigh. So I'm sure he's pretty pretty uh sore today but but yeah those vanderbilt's awesome i mean you'll look up next week and and they'll be doing great just like they did against lsu last week and and alabama uh you know our next opponent in conference is a great team too they pitch their rear end off um they have a potential first or second round pick on friday night and they have a kid that pitched awesome yesterday that we we tried hard uh, to get him to change his mind. Uh, he's from Houston area, Zane Adams, and uh, I think he threw eight, like two hit innings or something yesterday. So um, these games are every weekend's a super regional. So we just got to be ready for him. Schloss, can you speak to Travis Chestnut, uh, his growth this year, and the multiple options he provides for you all? Yeah, Travis. You know, it's, it's the you know it's the, it's the same thing. You know, we've We've seen what he's capable of doing when he gets on the bases. Um, he's always been a pretty good defender at second base. Travis's challenge on, he's so twitchy and so fast, and his mind actually moves at the same speed as his feet, which isn't always great. Um, so he's got a, on defense, you know, it's a challenge for him to play under control, but he can really turn a double play when he's under control. And then he made an awesome play on that chopper over the mound uh, to end an inning yesterday. And then offensively, it's just a matter, you know, he is finally, uh, Mike, myself, we sat him down and said, hey, man, if you're going to play, and, I, and I'll just be honest with you guys, if you remember Johnny Long, or everybody knows who he is now because he's a pretty controversial player, but the, uh, the catcher for Mississippi State, how he spreads out and stands right on top of home plate. Um, we we just told Chestnut, hey man, like you just gotta your job is to if you can somehow get on base twice a game, no matter how that is, and play good defense, then you can bring something to our team that we don't have. And it's a dynamic that's not in too many lineups, but it's certainly not in ours. And, you know, he has bought into that. So I think he got hit by a pitch yesterday. Uh he had a bunt hit. Um so that's the kind of player you know, that's the kind of player we need there. You know, the, the cool thing, the other cool thing he does for us is, let's say Sorrell's on first base with two outs, you know, normally you don't want to run and have your nine-hole hitter lead off the next inning, but if Travis is going to be able to get on base, then that opens our 
up our ability to, to be a little more aggressive on the base. Speaking of leadoff hitters, Gavin Grahovic with another really good week. But I, I want to talk about the maturity of his game, Coach. And where I saw it shine the most was in the double steal yesterday where Vanderbilt knew they had no shot to throw Travis Chestnut out at third. But it's imperative that the trail runner get a really good jump in that situation or he's going to be out because they're not going to throw it, Travis. And Gavin got an A-plus jump and beat that throw and set up Jace for an RBI spot. Set your, you guys up for two RBIs yes. on, on no hits in that inning. Correct. So we actually talked about that um, in the pregame uh, on Saturday because there was a time, I think it was Friday or it might have been Saturday, they all run together for me. There was a time when Jace Lavalette was up they were playing the shift and the third baseman was way over in the six hole and the, but the pitcher had a really quick leg time. So when they were playing that third baseman over in the six hole, um, what they were telling us is you can have third base, but we're throwing the second base. And so, um, I didn't have a sign or necessarily a way I was trying to get Mike's attention, but I was trying to, get Mike's attention and their, their attention and say, Hey, if chestnut goes, tell, uh, what's his name? Grahovic, uh, not to run because he would have been thrown out on a one, two leg time. There was no way chestnut was going to get thrown out. Even with lava let being left-handed hitter opened up, there was no way the third baseman was going to be able to get to the base. So we had that conversation. And when they made the pitching change, the difference was, the big lefty green had a big longer leg. So his time to the plate was around one five. So I knew, I said, Gavin, if, if, if Travis decides to go, you go ahead and go. Cause you'll make, it. um, because, because of the, you know, longer leg of the, of the pitcher. But yes, that was a massive play. It was actually my favorite sequence of the whole weekend because then Lavalette hit the sack fly. Uh, Grahovic got the third base on the sack fly. And then we had the contact play, and which, which we practice every single day. And that shortstop totally expected to have a play at home. And because we ran that contact play perfectly, he didn't have a choice but to throw the, the ball to first base. Schloss, we appreciate your time here on this uh, Monday morning. Thanks so much. We'll talk to you here on Thursday. All right, guys. Have a great day. Gig em.